Hi Truth 355. Uh, this is Mr. St. Germain and I have a video tour of my art making studio for the Art Merit Badge. Welcome. So I'm just taking a little panning shot around my workspace. So this is um, my workspace is in a finished uh, attic on the third floor. And um, you can see there's a fair amount of activity that goes on here. I draw every single day. Um, this movable wall you see is, um, that actually came from down the street. The elementary school was throwing it out. So I um, asked the principal just to just verify that it was garbage. And um, she said that I could take it with me, take it home. And uh, it's a wonderful wall because it has wheels and it lets me divide my space. And it also quickly, it's like an idea board because you'll notice there are some hanging canvases and drawings on the wall. And these are, these are pretty much ideas. These are not finished works. They do not have a degree of finish that's enough by my standards to, to warrant them as completed works. But still, like to me, these are, are, are little seeds. I look at these every day and um, they inspire me to come up with new ideas. Now these plaster sculptures, straight ahead, uh, these are finished works. Okay, I've spent about four years making these um, figures. Uh, they're abstract figures, so they're, they're made of, in the center, there's a little skeleton made out of aluminum foil, crumpled up, and it's wrapped with um, plaster bandages, much like the material that uh, they used to make casts out of when you broke an arm. And so, you know, these figures are these little sculptures, or well, little, you see my hand. Yeah, they're not small and not big, but they're inspired by natural forms. Yeah, they, 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 they look like birds or vases or outlines of human heads. Uh, let's see. Like there's like a duck-like form. There's a vase-like form. And um, so it's got, I'm gonna drop down here. It's just a pile of drawings. That's about five inches deep. Uh, these are abstract drawings and, you know, like I said, I, I draw every single day. So let's go through a few of them. Uh, these are hit or miss. Some of them are, are just, I keep working on them till they, till they fail or till they succeed. Okay, let's slide over next. Um, I had these in storage, but I thought I'd put them out just to show you. These are some um, rapid sketches I made of birds in the backyard a few years ago. Um, like a lot of my work, they're made out of ink or magic marker, a special pigmented artist marker. Um, I use a pigmented marker so it won't fade in the sunlight. But, um, you know, they're hit or miss. With magic marker, you can't erase, so you have to be decisive. And uh, if you make mistakes, oftentimes you have to throw out uh, the drawing because they just the, the, the errors are magnified. So here's my big work table. Try to get a better shot here. It's a very large table. It's made out of two uh, doors on sawhorses. Uh, it's a work table, but now it's functioning essentially as a platform on which to store my hundreds of drawings. So this, over the past year, I'm estimating that I've made about 500 drawings. I draw in the morning and at night and just about every single day. My goal is every single day. Once in a while, if I'm not home, I can't really draw. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's give an idea of what's going on here. So see this so uh, here are a few piles of more bird drawings and, and I have them organized I try to keep my workspace very organized I have some that I'm going to be posting up on social media there's a pile that I've already put up on social media and these are my rated B meaning that in my mind they're they're not quite my A game but they're they're good enough to save and look over once in a while and perhaps they 
they'll inspire me to uh, to do other artworks. There's another pile of drawings. Let's go overhead here. Um, I worked in this series a lot in the fall. So it was um, India ink, which I applied with a brush or a rag. And then when it dried, I used a um, pigmented magic marker. Now these are abstract drawings. But what I like when you when you put down black ink and you, and you rub it around a bit, it starts turning into um, what we were talking about in the Art Mirror Badge, value. Like the dark reads as far away, or shadows. The white reads as highlights. And those sort of gray areas read spatially in between. So it all starts being reminiscent of a photograph. So, shadow. So here's a little abstract drawing of... You know, I do a lot of things like this. I put together little... Uh, cube-like forms, fill them up with uh, circles, and this is sort of like an abstract version of a bird. And here's something that's like a big, kind of crazily detailed head. Now, I, a lot of times that I get going and I'm drawing and, and I put one mark down, I follow it to the next and to the next, and um, you know, I kind of discover when I'm drawing in an abstract manner what the subject is just by following the marks I put down. And again, the challenge with using a marker is that it's very unforgiving. If you slip and make a mistake, you've, done, you've, you've really got to make a good effort to put a mark next to it that makes it look like it's not a mistake. Or oftentimes you just have to throw it out. Before, but before throwing out a mark, I will take scissors to it and cut it into smaller pieces to see if it will work in another, perhaps in a, a part of the drawing will work. Um, I hear some more sculptures up here. Um, these were just, you know, a lot of things I do, I just kind of, I play around with material. So this kind of, it's just, it's a conical form. I just took some aluminum foil. Sorry about that. And I made like a, um, almost like a, a cone, like ice cream cone form. Out of aluminum foil, I filled it with um, plaster. And, you know, I made a bunch of them. And to me, they kind of look like little tents or little figures or sailboats. This little bird-like form. I, like make, I have a lot of birds in my work. I love looking at birds. You know, out, out in the real world, like bird watching. And, and I like making simplified these uh, bird figures that have, at times, they look like birds or like bird and human mixtures. So I'm going to dip in here to a painting I made a long time ago. Wow, it's old. So as you see, this is it's a painting that looks like a bunch of dots. It's acrylic paint. And sorry, there's a little color distortion there, but what I like, I like about working this way is that when you put a bunch of dots down, and you rub some of the paint around, it, again, it works like value. It starts reading like, like real life space. Um, in this case, it reminded me very much of a mountain with trees, perhaps snow. And uh, the area, so that you have the white and the black and the in-between value, the kind of gray area, it really creates a lot of space. Uh, I'm gonna apologize right now because the lighting in this little corner is not really ideal, but a little work. So here's another sculpture that I made. Again, we're where these works are made out of plaster bandages. I'll leave put my hand in there for a scale. That yeah, gives you an idea about how big that bird is compared to my hand. Um, this particular work is comprised of a basically a platform and five pieces that little owl here it's not really part of it but you know we'll keep them in there for right now uh, but this work with the platform the five pieces it was it was it came about in an interesting way so uh you know when i work with plaster bandages sometimes i have extra material and i like 
not wasting material. So, you know, I had some I had some plaster bandages that were wet, and so I quickly crumpled up some tin foil and I wrapped them around. And you know, I do this every time I worked when I had extra material. So I'd I'd quickly fashion a little skeleton out of aluminum foil, and then I'd put plaster bandages over. So I ended up a little collection of these figures. Um, and then, you know, one day that platform that they're resting on, it was going to be a wall piece, but I had it drying on its side um, in the same orientation it is here. And I just kind of rested the little figures I made on top of it. And it just, it seemed to work. Uh, it seemed like it was very uh, intentional. They, they seemed to visually be harmonious. There was a sense of drama, like this piece right here. It looks like it kind of fell over. It's like a light bulb form in the back. A little bird figure. This looks like another bird figure. This looks like kind of like limb or finger. Um, so in some ways, this was like a something that hinted at a story. It was like chess pieces, but without telling any exact story. It's going to drop down here. So these are some... Oh, there's a big head. These are, this corner is where I store a lot of plaster pieces. This is a big head. This is about... Uh, one and a half times the size of a human head. It's pretty heavy. Um, it's yeah, it's it's a pretty simple kind of almost kind of primitive inspired, primitive styled head. Oh, surprise, surprise! Another bird figure. This one's sort of a human bird combination. And I'll just kind of pan out here. Let's see if we separate some of these objects here. Now we have this kind of seated figure. That was an interpretation from a, um, that's an interpretation I made of a sculpture at the Museum of Fine Arts. Oh, there I am in the mirror, but this mirror is actually it's a pretty important mirror for me. I found it in the trash a long time ago. And it's about four and a half feet tall. And mirrors are really important to have an art studio. Because when you finish an artwork, you can hold them up to the mirror. And it, if there's an area of your artwork that's weak, it'll stand out in the mirror. Mirrors are also great for drawing self-portraits. And it gives you space like, it almost in some ways doubles your space. So there's a lot of uses for the mirror. Now behind the mirror, I store a lot of um, a lot of art books. I'm not actually moving the mirror now, but I'll dip in. When I say art books, these are books by artists. With have the um, the books have lots of um, photographs of the artist's work in them, and uh, it's great to keep uh, books around the uh, studio. A great source of inspiration, and um, you know if you have some artists that, that you're really fond of, it's just great to check in on the work. You know, every few months to see how maybe how your feelings about the work has changed. So in the distance, there's like a abstract painting on the top, a gray painting in the middle, and a textured piece in the bottom. I'll be walking towards those in a moment. But one neat thing about making art and having friends make art is that you trade with each other now and then. And so I get, you know, it's, it's a great way to acquire artwork that you love. Um, and it's also, it's, it's having something very personal. And um, I just love art. I love, I love swapping for art. Um, and it's just neat. So, because I look at these artworks, and in addition to just loving the artwork, you know, it gives me a, it leaves you with the memory of some friends who I don't see anymore because they've moved away. And, you know, it's, it's also good to, to look at these works and um, it's like a snapshot in a very particular time of an artist friend's life. Some artists have gone on that I know to make very different things and these are just a wonderful reminder of what they used to make. Okay, so that was like just a pretty quick tour and I just want to say a few things about my studio. I try to keep it organized. As you'll notice, I've, I have drawings that are similar size drawings are are in piles and I, I keep similar sized drawings together because you know I don't want my drawings to bend. If you have big floppy drawings on top of smaller drawings they'll droop 
and maybe crease. Um, and I always, I try to just keep really organized. So look, there's a little plastic container and I just have screws and nails and pins. You know, things that could be scattered all over the place, but you know, little seemingly insignificant items that are really important when you need them. So if you have them set up in areas where you, if you have them set up in an area which you know where it is, they'll, they'll be ready to use the instance notice. Okay, so here is a storage shelf with more plaster pieces. Notice the three boxes on top. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty careful about storage of my work. I do create a lot of work. Um, it's important to keep it organized. You know, I've been making art for 30 years and it's good to be able to just, within a moment, to be able to retrieve a work from a specific date from a specific box. Organization is very important, as is Keeping, keeping failed works or works in progress on hand just ready to go because you never know when you, when you look at a work if it's if it's going to inspire you to finish it uh, something that might not work today you might look at it another day and it might give you an idea for something else so what we we're talking about early about being prepared look at my brushes I keep them in a coffee can but the brushes the tips are pointed up so they're not going to get dented the tips are all nice and clean, so I can just reach in and get painting. You know, a challenging thing about making art is that is that some people, you know, they have a hard time getting going, like setting up their paints, setting up setting up their paper and markers and ink. But I keep my space set up so I can literally sit down, reach reach over to the side, grab my marker and my uh, pad of paper, and get going. You know, I have, I'm doing a still life. I have the still life set up um, right beyond my chair. So I can just drop in and get to work. Um, same thing with my brushes and my paint. I keep all my materials close by and ready to roll. So it's not a big, it's not a big production about getting set up. I'm not wasting my time setting up. Um, okay, so I think that that was a pretty good overview. Um, yeah, so so just think about any questions you have, feel free to ask. Uh, just like for, uh, as a takeaway, that to encourage you to um, continue making artwork. And if it becomes uh, more of a part of your life after the badge, uh, set up a little space, keep it organized, and um, it, it, will, it will pay you back thousands of times over in terms of, um, uh, kind of a spiritual nourishment and um, uh, feeling good. Okay, uh, thank you. Bye.